Hi everybody, this is Eugene O'Loughlin, lecturer in computing at the National College of Ireland, and in this short video I'd like to show you how to create a project network diagram using Microsoft PowerPoint. So in this video what we're going to do is we're first of all going to examine a list of activities, their dependencies and durations. Next we're going to look at a list of tools that we need to draw a project network diagram. Then we're going to use the activity and arrow method to draw the diagram. Next we will identify the critical path through the diagram that we have just drawn. And finally we will calculate the overall duration of our project. So here I have a table listing activities, their dependencies and durations. This is typical of what you will get when you are drawing a project network diagram or you're asked one in say in a test or something. I've got nine activities here listed. I'm simply labeling them A, B and C. That's in the left-hand column. In the middle column, I have the dependencies of each activity uh, compared to when other activities are complete. So, for example, activities A and B don't have any dependencies. They're not dependent on any other activity co being complete. But activity C is dependent on A being complete. D is also dependent on A being complete. And E is dependent on B being complete. Right down to our table, to our last activity, I, which is dependent on activities F, G, and H being complete. And in our third column, we've simply got the duration of each activity. This could be hours or days or months or years or whatever it is that you choose. So in our example here, we're going to have days. I'm in edit mode in the Microsoft PowerPoint here, and I've just made a couple of changes. First of all, I've made the table a lot smaller because I'm going to need some space. And in my diagram here, I'm going to use the activity and arrow method to draw the project network diagram. And I need just three separate tools to do this. I need an arrow. Each activity is going to be represented by an arrow. I'm going to need a name and a duration for each activity. And the example I have here is activity A with a duration of 1. And every activity has a start and end node. So this circle here represents a node with the number 1 inside. And I'm going to use this at the beginning and at the end of each activity. Let's move on and prepare ourselves to draw the network diagram. In this slide here, I've just moved things out of the way a little bit. I've got my table moved up to the top right-hand corner, and I have a little small bank of objects that I have used here. And these objects have been created using the drawing tool in Microsoft Object. I've got my nodes, my text, and my arrow, which is all I need to draw the diagram. So let's look at the table, and I can see the first activity, activity A. So I want to represent that, and activity all activities st start with a node. So I'm going to put the copy and paste the objects from the top left-hand corner as I need them onto my diagram. So I'm going to start off with node number one. Activity A will be represented by an arrow, so I'm going to copy and paste the arrow down here. Put this on my diagram and point it upwards. And of course, as an activity, it has an end node, so I'm going to go back and copy the end node here. Change the node number to node number two. And this arrow here will need a name and a duration, so I'm copying and pasting the text down from up here. And activity A from my table, you can see, has a duration of four days. So that's how we put the first activity on our diagram. Activity B is very similar to activity A. It doesn't have any dependencies, so let's put an arrow in to represent activity B. Put this at the bottom and have it pointing downwards. We need an end node to represent this activity. So I'm going to put that node number here and call this node number 3. And of course, the activity uh, arrow will need a name and a duration. So I'm going to put copy and paste some text down here, edit that text, so that this is, becomes activity B, which has a duration of three days in our example. So there's the first two activities on our diagram. It's starting to look a little bit like a project network diagram now. Let's move on to the next activity, which is activity C. So first of all, put in an arrow to represent act activity. So copy and paste an arrow. Put an end node in, copy and paste the node over. This is going to be node number four. And copy down the name and the duration of the activity as well. So copy the text down and edit that. So this says activity C, which has a duration of two days according to our table. Activity D is quite similar to C in that it can only start when activity A is complete. So let's put in an arrow to represent activity D. So put that in. It begins at node number two. And I'm just going to point this downwards a little bit. Put in an end node to represent the end of activity D. This is going to be node number five. And of course, we need to put a name and a duration onto our arrow. So copy and paste the text to represent that down here. This is activity D, which I can see from my table has a duration of five days. So relatively straightforward so far. The next activity is also a straightforward activity. Activity E begins when B is complete. So copy an arrow down to represent activity E. Put an end node on that activity. Copy and paste our node object down. 
this is going to be node number 6 and of course as before give our arrow a name and a duration to represent the activity so this is activity E which I can see from my table has a value of 2 days so now we have 5 of our 9 activities drawn on the diagram so relatively straightforward so far but it gets a little more complicated from now on and this is where a lot of people who are drawing diagrams will make a mistake so my next three sets of activities, I have activity F, which begins when C is complete. I have activity G, which begins when activity D is complete. And I have activity H, which begins when activity E is complete. So let's first of all put in an arrow to represent each of those activities. So I'm going to copy and paste an arrow down here for the first, one for the second, and paste an arrow down for the third activity. This time, instead of putting the end nodes in first, I'm going to put the names of each activity on my diagram. So first of all, let's put in activity F, which has a value of three days. Activity G, which has a value of two days. And the final one for now is activity H, which has a value of one day. So let's just edit that there to show that. So now I've got my three arrows pointing here as I would have expected to do. However, on my table I can see that there's only one more activity left and it is dependent on activities F, G and H being complete that you see here. So first of all, let's go down the road of putting in an end node for each of these activities and see what happens next. So I'm putting in an end node for activity F, an end node for activity G and an end node for activity H. Give these nodes appropriate values, node number 7 there, node number 8 to represent the end of activity G, and node number 9 to represent the end of activity H. Now, of course, I've only got one more activity left, which I can only represent with one arrow. And you can see that I have a problem here. What do I do? I've got three nodes, and I can only start an arrow at one node. So clearly, I have an issue here as to which one to choose. But of course I don't choose one of the three because I can't start the next activity and all three of these. I must have only one node. So what we do is we get all three activities F, G and H to finish at the same node. So let's delete node number 8 because it serves the requirements. Delete node number 9 and I'm just going to move activity node number 7 down to the center and bring the arrows for each of the other activities to point down to node number 7 move the text. I'm not changing any values here at all. So now I can see that activities F, G and H with durations of 3, 2 and 1 days respectively all pointing to node number 7 and this represents the end of each of these three activities. Now I've only got one starting node for activity number uh, labeled I so this is what I need so I'm going to put an arrow down to represent that. Put an end node in here, so this is going to be node number 8. And bring down a text label for this to put in the name of activity I, which has a duration of 3 days. So now I can see activity I starting when activities F, G and H complete, and then uh, node number 8 represents the end of my project. So here I can see, based on the table that we have uh, been given, a project network diagram drawn for my project. All the activities are labelled, so I've got nine activities, therefore I have got nine arrows on the diagram, and each arrow has a start and end node. Each arrow also has a name to represent the name of the activity and the, the number representing the duration of each activity. On the next slide here, I have a slightly tidier version of this diagram, a little bit more professional looking, which I've drawn a little bit earlier on, to represent what we have just drawn. The last two things we want to do is to calculate the critical path through this diagram and the overall duration of the project. Now when I look at my diagram, I can see that there are three possible paths through this diagram. I could go through activities A, C, F and I, that's one possibility. I could go through activities A, D, G and I, that's a second possibility. And of course the third and last possibility is to go through activities B, E, H and I. So there are three path paths through this diagram. Which one of these is the critical path which as a project manager is the one I want to monitor most? So what we do here is we add up the durations along each path to give us the overall duration for each of the three paths. So let me just modify my diagram slightly here. And we can see that when we add up activities A, C, F and I we get a total of 12 days. 
If we add up activities A, D, G and I, we have a total of 14 days. And finally, if we add up the totals on the third path, B, E, I and H and I, we get a total of 9 days. So the path highlighted in red here in the middle is the longest path of 14 days. Therefore, this is the critical path in this particular project. And this also tells us that the overall duration of this project is 14 days. So that's how we draw a project network diagram using Microsoft PowerPoint. I hope you found this video useful. Thank you for your attention.